What's going on, True Blazer fans? It's Tori, and I'm here with a playoff mailbag. Now, I did not do Monday mailbags because the playoffs were a lot of work for me. Just putting out one of those game recaps after every game took a lot of time. So I really just needed to dedicate my work towards that instead of doing a mailbag every Monday. And I figured all the questions were going to be the same questions about the playoffs and everything happening with that. So that's why I haven't been doing them lately, and now that this first round series is over and we have a little bit of downtime, I've decided to do a playoff mailbag. So I posted in the community section of our channel a prompt for you guys to give me your questions, and we got 12 of them. So we're just going to jump straight in, starting with Cash Carter, who says, Who do you think would be an ideal matchup, the Spurs or the Nuggets? I think the Spurs. And I think that's the consensus among all Blazer fans, the Spurs are the better matchup for multiple reasons first off we'd have home court advantage second they don't really have the defenders to hold our guards in check Derek White DeMar DeRozan Patty Mills none of those guys are good defenders Damian and CJ would go off against the Spurs and then third they don't pose the matchup problems for us defensively that a guy like Nikola Jokic does. Having Ennis Cantor chase Jokic around would be very scary in my opinion. Instead, they got Jakob Pertl as their starting center. Cantor can definitely deal with him. And Aminu has done a good job on Aldridge in the past, so I'm not worried about that. They also don't really have the personnel to get out and trap or pressure the pick and roll. We just saw Steven Adams struggle to do that. And with Jakob Pertl and Lamarcus Aldridge, those guys aren't going to be able to do that either compare that to a guy like Paul Millsap who can get out and move his feet or Mason Plumlee off the bench who we all know but I think we kind of underrated how quick and mobile he is defensively he could definitely put some pressure on a pick and roll I definitely think the Spurs would be a much better matchup for us than the Nuggets Lucas Live says, is it only me that I've witnessed that Seth has played some clutch defense multiple times this year? And I've noticed this too. There's three plays that I remember and only two I can name off the top of my head. That steal against Paul George down the stretch in game five. And then that steal at the end of the game on D'Angelo Russell to put the Nets game into overtime that was the steal where he picked his pocket and then got fouled and made one of the two free throws when we were down one and then there was another play somewhat recently I believe in the past month where he got a steal with less than a minute left if somebody knows what play I'm talking about please point it out to me but I know there's another steal where he played very clutch defense so no it's not just you I've definitely noticed that as well he steps up on the defensive end with the game on the line Storm Frantic 15 says what kind of adjustments will we have to make in order to be successful against the Nuggets or Spurs and honestly all the adjustments we'd make would probably be matchup specific so I can't really list them all now for two different matchups once we know who we're playing I will have a video talking about how we match up with them and what to look forward to from that series and that should be coming up tomorrow as the Spurs and Nuggets play game seven tonight Bryce says favorite NFL team and he says he's a 49er fan which is rare among trailblazer fans and Bryce I'm also a 49er fan the way I became a 49er fan was my dad was a bandwagon Niner fan. He loved Joe Montana, loved Jerry Rice. I'm not from San Francisco. My dad's not from California, but I grew up learning the game of football by watching the 49ers with him and that made me a fan. Now he's also a New York Yankee fan and I considered myself a fan when I was a kid. Now I'm a Mariner fan for better or worse. Uh, definitely worse <laughs> so yeah i'm a blazer mariner and 49er fan natty twan says because of this year's playoff performance do you think we'll be able to finally add another star this offseason and if we had this performance before the 2020 offseason that'd be a different discussion as we have all those bad contracts expiring and we'd finally have a little bit of cap space and a little bit of momentum as a franchise to be able to possibly make something happen there but this offseason we have too much money on the books and we're gonna struggle just to keep our own guys owen richmond said thoughts on the suns trying to poach our assistant coaches and honestly that's 100 percent fine our assistants deserve a head coaching opportunity especially vanterpool especially tibbets those guys are two of the best assistant coaches in the league and i know i can be critical of our coaching staff 
but I definitely think our assistants are part of the reason why we're able to develop players so well and that's why we're successful so for a rebuilding team that needs to develop players Vanterpool would be a great coach Tibbs would be a great coach the Suns are definitely within their right to go after those guys we granted permission it sucked to lose them but it'd be awesome to see them get a chance to be a head coach the only problem I have is it's the Suns and they fire a coach seemingly every year so who knows if those guys would even get a fair chance to be able to make it stick there that organization is a joke possibly the worst organization in the league so if Tibbetts or Vanterpool get a head coaching job I'd want to see it come in a little bit better situation for them moving forward Joe McGuire says if Ennis is injured for game one of the Western Conference Finals should we start Myers and keep Zach off the bench and it depends on who we play if we end up playing the Spurs it would make sense to start Myers Jakob Pertl is kind of a bigger slower big man and Myers has more success against those types of bigs if we start against the Nuggets I think it makes more sense to have Zach Collins start just because Zach Collins can kid out and pressure the ball a little bit make passes a little bit harder for Jokic and can step away from the rim while Zach would struggle inside there's really no easy matchup against Jokic Jokic is going to have success against whoever we put on him but if we end up playing the Nuggets Collins should start if we end up playing the Spurs Myers should start hopefully Ennis is fine because I want him starting no matter what Michael Cook says what role do you think Zach will have in this upcoming series also what do you think he needs other than weight to make the next step and uh, Zach will play a role he's ahead of Myers in the rotation his defense is needed off the bench he had a decent game four and he didn't really show up much in game five but he's inconsistent how much he plays and what his role will be depends on Ennis's health depends on matchups like I said depends on a number of factors so it's not easy to speculate in terms of what he needs to do to make the next step I think he just needs to continue his trajectory right now. He improved a lot this season, but fans are expecting a little bit too much out of him a little bit too quickly. He's still only 21 years old. He has still never really started at a high level except for his senior year in high school. And I know that sounds like a bunch of excuses, but when we drafted this guy, we knew he was going to probably be a four-year project. We're just reaching the halfway point of that, and he's a contributor on a playoff team playing in the second round. Honestly, he needs a little bit more confidence offensively. He needs to shoot with a little bit more confidence. He needs to get his jump shot better, maybe work on his passing a bit. I mean, he can improve every area of his game. I think strength is the biggest thing, though, so that he's able to hold his ground on defense against bigger players and so that he doesn't get knocked off his spot in the low post when he's trying to post somebody up. CPDXFan17 says, if the Blazers were to get a G League team, what would their name be? And honestly, I have no idea. I could see something like the Pioneers kind of goes along with the whole Trail Blazers thing, Portland Pioneers, or wherever the G League team is located. You know, maybe it's in Hillsboro, maybe it's up here in Vancouver, I don't know. True Blazer fans, I want you to give me your thoughts on a team name for a potential G League team. Sonny Babel says, what day will game one start? Monday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. And last question, and Solar Money Yeet says, what do we need to do to get Rodney Hood going? He hasn't been good at all. And if you look at Rodney Hood's career playoff stats, he's always struggled in the postseason. But watching him play with us right now, I don't think that's entirely his fault. We got him going late in the season because we started running more sets for him. We started running more screens where he could curl and get to the mid-range, get to his floater, get going downhill without having to try and set that up. Up by going one on one and we seem to have abandoned that so far this postseason and if we do run it we have Evan Turner initiating the offense and Evan Turner's guy is saying so far that it completely clogs up the action I think Rodney Hood is good in transition we need to get runouts with him on the court we need to continue to look to attack mismatches if he's able to get them in the low post because he is a good low post player and then a lot of it I think has to do with his confidence he seems to be a little bit shaky in terms of confidence and I think it gets worse in the playoffs so there's a number of different reasons why I think he's struggling and there's a number of different things we could try to get him going thank you guys for all your questions for this playoff mailbag I don't know when the next one will be it'll probably be after the second round if we win the second round series it'll be another mailbag like this just a playoff mailbag if we lose the series and the season is over then we'll transition into off-season content and then I'll start back up with just normal Monday mailbags along with some other 
things to wrap up the season. Hopefully I'm making another playoff mailbag here in a week or two. So anyway, that's all I got for now, True Blazer fans. I hope you enjoyed. With that, I'll see you later. Have a good weekend. Peace out. Go Blazers. Damian working on Schroeder, goes right to the rim between defenders, a reverse right hand off the window. And game clock, Westbrook into the lane on Aminu, forced up a shot, it rolls off, rebound to Chief. In a tie ball game, Damian will bring it up the floor with 14. You want the last shot. Damian clears midcourt, he's got 11. Tied at 115, crowd rising to the feet. George will defend Lillard, spread floor. Lillard with 47 tonight, working it down to 2-1, to one. a deep three. Oh!